can go ahead and get started. clicking and it wouldn't unmute. Can you hear me? It Dawn? happens. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Gretchen Winters, the Director of Marketing for Burst Travel, Pegasus Travel. And we really want to thank you so much for spending some time with us this afternoon um, to learn more about the um, Rocky Mountaineer um, Canadian and now the new U.S. product, which we're very excited about. I think you're in for a real treat. Um, Dawn does an excellent job, and uh, Dawn is our account manager with Rocky Mountaineer, and she takes very good care of us. So, like I said, you're in for a real treat. Um, at the end of the, of the presentation, I'm going to just jump back on and remind everybody how you can get a hold of your Birch um, or Pegasus Travel Advisor. And, um, you know, with the COVID protocols and things, I like to just kind of do a quick review of that. But um, the other reminder, and I'm sure Dawn may even... Uh, can reiterate this in the presentation is that the demand for travel is high. People are tired of sitting at home and they want to get going. So we are telling everybody that um, if you're planning to travel this year or most importantly for next year, don't wait too long because space is filling up quickly. So um, I just want to remind everybody of that and so that you're aware as you um, gather information and start to make your plans to, to get out and travel. So I will uh, mute myself and turn it over to you, Dawn. Great. Thank, thank you so much. And, and yeah, Gretchen couldn't be more true. I mean, if you think about it, everybody's starting to want to travel now. And we're having to put 2020 and some 2021 people back on to now 2022. So, so later this year and uh, next year are filling up very, very quickly. So just a little who I am, uh, this is me. I think it's nice to put a face with a voice. You never know who's talking to you on these webinars, right? So my name is Dawn. I am the key accounts manager uh, for Rocky Mountaineer for the North Central region. And Rocky Mountaineer, uh, if you haven't heard of us, for over 30 years, we have taken guests from around the world on just remarkable journeys through the Canadian Rockies. And now we get to say that we get to go, we are in the US as well. Um, as daylight only train travel, we offer breathtaking views of, of iconic Western Canada and now Southwest United States landscapes and partner with the best hotels at night to make sure you get a good rest and all that. Um, we travel in, we've become really known for our spacious and luxurious rail cars. And I'll get into that in just a minute. I love this next slide. Oh, and before I forget, I did see somebody already chatting with me, which is fabulous. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Please put them in the Q&A and I will be sure to answer those at the end. Um, but while you're thinking of it, put it in because if you're anything like me, you'll forget by, by the time it comes around. So put those in and I'll get to them at the end. Uh, I really love this slide. Seeing is believing is a huge understatement because there are sites that you're gonna see on board Rocky Mountaineer that you can only see on board Rocky Mountaineer. You could drive these areas in both Canada and the US and they would be absolutely beautiful. But um, there are parts that you couldn't see and I'll even show you some pictures of that. You're just, you're down in nature. You are deep in nature going to some sites and seeing some sites that, that are inaccessible uh, by, by car. Um, and for the person that has no pictures, I am sorry about that. Um, I really don't know what to say. You might wanna uh, un try going out and back in again because I do believe everybody else is able to see the picture. So I am sorry about, about that. Um, so to continue on, a day on board the train. Again, day is really important. The word day, super important here. We are daylight only train travel. One of the biggest misconceptions I get is that you, where do you sleep on the train? And you don't sleep on the train. You, uh, you always are overnighting in hotels. And the reason being, besides it not being super comfortable to, to sleep on a train, you are arguably going to two of the prettiest areas of the world, the Canadian Rockies and the Colorado Rockies. You want to see them, right? You don't want to be sleeping through them, and you certainly don't want to be traveling through them at night. So that is one thing that makes Rocky Mountaineer very, very unique. 
Another thing that makes us unique is our world-class cuisine. And I mean world-class cuisine. We win award upon award upon award for our food. What I love about it, it's all locally sourced. So in, in Canada, the beef is from the Alberta region. The salmon is from the Pacific Northwest. In the US, it's gonna be locally sourced as well. And it's gonna have a little bit of a Southwest flair to it, which will be really fun. And the third thing that makes Rocky Mountaineer unique uh, from anybody else besides our daylight only travel and our world-class cuisine is our commentary on board. So you have hosts on board the train taking care of you. Besides taking care of your needs, they will tell you the history of the area. They will tell you sites that you're coming up to and say, you wanna get your camera ready because Pyramid Falls will be on your right in about five minutes. And they're also great animal spotters. So they actually carry walkie talkies. So if anybody on the train spots an animal, they'll yell out bear on the left. And then it's really funny because everybody screams and jumps up and runs and takes a picture of the bear. But that is where it becomes a really fun social engagement as well at that point. And it's so funny because I've seen, I've been on Rocky Mountaineer well over half a dozen times and you would think I would get tired of seeing the bears. Oh no, the bears, the mountain lions, the bald eagles, they're all, that's all really fun when one is spotted. So the first, what I'm gonna do today is talk about Canada at first and then I'll get into our US route. So this is our Canadian route, uh, basically Vancouver over to the Jasper, Banff, Lake Louise area and then out of Calgary. In Canada, we have two classes of service called Gold Leaf and Silver Leaf. And you can see here the difference. Gold is a two level rail car. Here's a better picture of it, where you sit up top and you have the big domed windows, 180 degree view of the Canadian Rockies. Where that logo is, you take a spiral staircase down and you dine on the main level, restaurant style, tables of four, two across from each other. And then we also have an outdoor viewing area on Gold Leaf. Now that holds about, probably about 20, 25 people if we were all to stand side by side. But generally, I mean, I've been out there 20 minutes by myself. I've been out there with maybe five, six people, but definitely out there by myself for quite some time. People just tend to come and go. It's a great place to take pictures. Then our Silver Leaf rail car is a single level rail car, same great service. So whether you're on gold or silver, it is all inclusive when you're on the train. And that means your meals, your snacks, and your alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages are included, whether you're on gold, whether you're on silver. The beauty too of Rocky Mountaineer is every rail car, every rail car, be it gold or silver, has its own kitchen and culinary team. So your food is being made right there, um, plated to your preference, and brought to you. So uh, um, as you can see here, I'll, I'll do some more pictures, some better pictures of the Silverleaf rail cars, uh, but you can see the big wide windows. It is a domed car. It's just not the full 180 degree domes, um, but plenty of leg room. And again, I'll show you some more pictures in just a minute on those. So I'm gonna talk about our Canadian routes. Now what Rocky Mountaineer does, we combine uh, two to three days on the train then we combine it with sightseeing and touring. So uh, we make a complete package. So it gets a little confusing. So what I'm gonna do is break it down for you. So right now I'm just gonna talk about our routes. So I'm in Canada. So I'm talking about the three solid line here. We're not gonna worry about that green dotted line quite yet. So we have two routes to go to Jasper, one that goes to Lake Louise and Banff. Our three day route to Jasper is called uh, Rainforest to Gold Rush. And you would you can start and end in Vancouver or Jasper. Train goes both ways. It's the same scenery, and uh, and then you would overnight in Whistler and Quesnel. So Vancouver, oh my gosh! If you have not spent time in Vancouver, I highly recommend you spend at least at least a minimum of one extra day. Uh, Vancouver is actually where our headquarters is. So I love going in. You know, usually mandatory meetings or trainings. You're like, oh hey, I don't mind it because they pay for my air back in the day and I you know, pay for a few extra nights hotel. I just love Vancouver, truly one of my top three favorite cities in the world. So much to do there. Um, Stanley Park, where the totem poles are, the Capilano suspension bridges. I promise you it's not as scary as it looks in that picture. That's an awesome picture. 
It's not as it's not as scary as it looks. But my favorite is Granville Island. It's like Pike's Market in Seattle, but on steroids. It's just it's this huge marketplace with shops and restaurants, and and at least have lunch on Granville Island is what I recommend. So after you experience Vancouver, you'll get on the train and you'll get into Whistler around noon. And Whistler, iconic little ski town. Uh, what I love about it is that you do get in at noon, so you have the rest of the day and the evening free to enjoy. Uh, this little village in British Columbia, home of the 2010 Winter Olympics. You'll overnight, get on the train the next day, and wow, you're gonna notice a huge topography difference. In fact, if you're into different sceneries, this is a great route for you. Because from Whistler, you're gonna head north through the Fraser Canyon, which is what this is, and you're gonna head north towards Quesnel while you're overnight. And Quesnel is where the gold rush happened in Canada. So. Um, lots of deserts, lots of canyons. So, you know, you hit the, the rainforest of Vancouver, you hit the mountains of Whistler, then you're in the desert of, of the Quesnel area. And then finally the next day as well, hitting the beauty of the, the Canadian Rockies. This is a shot of Mount Robson. It's actually the highest peak in the Canadian Rockies. The climbers there call it the Great White Fright. And you would end your rail journey in Jasper on this route. Now, remember, again, I'm just talking rail journeys only. I'll talk about what we're going to do in a bit after the rail journey. Then our two-day route uh, to Jasper is called Journey Through the Clouds. You overnight in Kamloops. Now, people always ask me, what is there to do? Why Kamloops? Why Quesnel? These really are just overnight stops. So we keep the integrity of the daylight only train travel going. Um, although I've come to really like Kamloops, it's a town of about 100,000 people. It's where the North and South branches of the Thompson River come together. And so there's a, a beautiful park within walking distance of all the hotels that we stay at. And in the summer, live music plays every single night in that park. So it's really fun to just get out and stretch your legs and go for a walk and listen to some music. The next day you'll head to Jasper and you will pass sites such as Pyramid Falls. Now, Pyramid Falls is one of those sites that is inaccessible by car. You can only see it on board Rocky Mountaineer. So, I mean, can't you just picture yourself on that rail car, looking up at the mountain, the pine trees, the aspen trees, and all of a sudden seeing this beautiful waterfall just cascading down over the cliffs and the rocks. It's just absolutely stunning. And then again, ending your journey in Jasper. Now, Jasper surprised me the first time I went. I thought it was bigger than what it is. It's only a town of about 4,000 people. But to me, it is very pristine and very untouched. Um, I've actually seen I was on a I'm an avid runner and and I saw I was on an early morning jog and I saw three elk walking down the main street of Jasper. I was jogging on the sidewalk and there's three elk just walking down the main street. It was really, really uh, a really cool experience. And then we have our first passage to the West route. Now this one is great for you train buffs and you history buffs. So over 20, 125 years ago, this route united Canada and really helped it define a nation. Um, because before that, British Columbia, the Canadian Rockies were too big of a barrier. But once it joined, um, they joined it with the rail in, um, sorry, once they joined it with the rail, it became Canada as we know it today. I say that a hundred times. I'm not sure why I had trouble getting that one out. So um, in between Kamloops and Lake Louise uh, is something called the spiral tunnels. So when they did finally hit that last spike in Kregalaki, connecting to uh, 3,200 kilometers of rail, uh, it, it was a little steep. <laughs> and it was pretty dangerous and treacherous to travel on this rail line. They couldn't control the speed of the train, which makes for dangerous travel. So they brought in engineers from Switzerland who literally said, oh, okay, we're gonna just, we know what we're gonna do. We're gonna blast through the mountains. And the Canadians were like, what? You're gonna do what? Remember, this was the early 1900s. So they did just that. They literally blasted through the mountains and created what they call spiral tunnels. I always joke, we're not Disney World. They're not really spiral. They actually look like a big giant cursive L, 
But what it does, the tracks go up and down at varying degrees, thus controlling the speed of the train. Um, that's as technical as I can get on it, but trust me, it's really cool. It's an engineering marvel to this day, and we are the only passenger train to travel on this route and through the spiral tunnels. Uh, so on this route, you can end in Lake Louise or Banff. Oh my gosh, uh, this is a shot right down Banff Avenue. And, you know, just like you need a couple nights in Vancouver, please do a couple nights in Banff as well. First time I did Rocky Mountaineer, I had one night in Banff. We were a bit delayed. Plus, if you're going eastbound, you go from Pacific time to mountain time. So it was about eight o'clock when we got in. I had time for dinner and I had an 8 a.m. transfer to the Calgary airport the next day. I was so disappointed. I made that mistake once and I've never made it again. Uh, this picture, like I said, is a shot right down Banff Avenue, and, and it depicts what I love about the Canadian Rockies. I mean, doesn't it look like you're just going to walk down that block and run smack dab into that mountain? It's like that all over the Canadian Rockies. They just surround you and envelop you. They're just so, so, so majestic. So everything I've talked about so far has been going kind of one way on the train, say starting in Vancouver, heading up to Jasper and or Banff, and then you would fly out of Calgary. But when back in the day when we were doing trade shows, almost every single trade show I went to, I'm not, I'm not kidding, almost everyone I went to, I had people coming up to me saying, oh my gosh, Rocky Mountaineer, one of the best trips I've ever taken. But I wish I would have had more time on the train or I wish I would have gone both ways on the train. In other words, they wish they would have done a circle journey. What that is, is you could take one route, say that red first passage to the west route over to the Canadian Rockies, do the touring that I'll talk about in just next and head your way up to Jasper, spend some time there and take another route back. So you'd be flying in and out of Vancouver round trip versus into Vancouver out of Calgary. So uh, what there is to do in the Canadian Rockies, this is where we put together the packages. And this is where that green dotted line comes into play. There is no rail that goes north and south from Jasper down to Calgary. So that we do it by sightseeing, uh, motor coach tours generally. Um, these are more like kind of half day, full day excursions. So you have a driver guide with you. Or you can do it by self-drive, which is, you know, renting a car. We make sure it's put all together for you. It's super easy. There's one road, the Icefields Parkway. You can't get lost. I promise you, it is impossible to get lost. And it's not really uh, treacherous mountain driving. The highway is in the valley, as you can see here. What's there to do in the Canadian Rockies? Um, I could do a whole webinar on it. I really could. In the interest of time, I, I had to choose two. So I'll pick my two favorite things. The Columbia Ice Fields, which is where you take your, this tractor looking thing out onto a glacier, Athabasca Glacier. Athabasca Glacier is one of the few glaciers in the world that is accessible by a motorized vehicle. When you're out there, I want you to think of this. You will be standing on a glacier that is as thick as the Eiffel Tower is tall. That's pretty amazing if you think about it. So the Columbia Ice Fields and also the Banff Gondola. That is another favorite of mine. Love this gondola. We have gondolas in Jasper and gondolas in, in Vancouver as well. I love this one. This is my favorite. It's about eight minutes up. And you, what I love about it is you don't want to just take a picture, turn around and come back. There's a boardwalk that goes out probably about a half a mile. And you don't have to go out and walk the whole thing, but just promise me that you'll go out, I don't know, 30 steps, because about every 30 steps, you are just going to see another breathtaking view of the Canadian Rockies. Uh, Gretchen mentioned that 2022 and 2021 is booking up quickly, and yes, it is. Um, Rocky Mountaineer has our best promo of the year, so we have we always give our best promos to those who book the earliest. So for 2022, we are currently offering two free hotel nights, and by the way, this is for 2022 Canada, two free hotel nights. Remember those nights I said in Vancouver? They can be compliments of Rocky Mountaineer. One free airport transfer 
and one free dinner. Now, if you're going to stay at some of the Fairmont properties that are so well known and famous in the Canadian Rockies, uh, use it towards that because those are expensive little dinners. So just a little tip. That offer expires August 27th. But like Gretchen said, um, it really, we are booking up because we're putting 2020, pe 2020 people, some 2021 people and uh, 2022 people on there. We do have a risk-free refundable deposit. So normally when you book Rocky Mountaineer, it's a 20% non-refundable deposit at the time of booking. We are making it redeep we are making it refundable until December 3rd. Also, with this offer, you normally have to make payment in full early in January. We are waiving that. It will be the normal 60 days prior to departure. So deposit is refundable until December 3rd and no early payment needed. If I know the borders aren't open, but we are all being very hopeful. If you're interested in going in 2021, I would recommend booking late, late, late in the season. Um, but we are offering pretty much the same thing except one free hotel night instead of two. Like I said, you always get the best deal if you're booking the earliest. And I will go over deposit requirements for 2021 in a little bit. One thing I do wanna mention, and this is really important, we, we have a few seats left on this. So Burst Travel is doing um, the Journey Through the Clouds route and they're doing a group September 28th through October 7th of 2022. It's going to do uh, two nights in Vancouver. They're gonna be heading to Victoria and Bouchard Gardens and doing our Journey Through the Clouds route. This is actually the route I picked for my own personal vacation. Um, going up to Kamloops, spending two nights in Jasper, coming down, spending two nights in Banff, doing all the touring, and then flying out of Calgary. That's September 28th through October 7th of 2022. The beauty of the group is um, the promos are already built in. So you wouldn't get whatever the rate is, you would not get the additional promos because we've already built in a better promo for groups. Groups always get the best promos. And also only a 10% deposit required uh, for groups instead of the 20%. So I'll, I'll bring that up at the end, but just remember to contact your Birch or Pegasus um, travel advisor about that. Okay, new for 2021. Oh my gosh, I am so, so proud to announce our newest rail route traveling from Denver to Moab over two unforgettable days featuring the awe-inspiring sights of the Colorado Rockies and the remarkable desert rock formations of Moab, Utah. Now, we originally were gonna only operate this for 10 weeks, 40 departures. Again, <laughs> to, to reiterate Gretchen's point, we've had to extend our season. We are now operating it uh, until from August 11th until November 18th. So we were gonna end the season mid-October but we are extending it until November 18th. In the US, we'll be traveling on board our Silverleaf rail car. Now you may be saying, well, wait a minute, Dawn, you, in, in Canada, you mentioned there was two rail cars, gold and silver. There, there, was, there are in Canada. In the US, some of the tunnels are too small to handle our bi-level gold leaf domed cars. So we are gonna just bring our Silverleaf rail cars down in, but they are great options. I have some, travel advisors that prefer selling silver leaf over gold leaf. You know, it just really depends. Gold leaf, you get an overview, but silver leaf, you're right down in nature. So if you do happen to see that bear, uh, he's, he's there, he's right there. You can see there's plenty of room in between. You can see people are standing sideways, taking the pictures, um, plenty of leg room. Um, I, pre-COVID, my last trip was, October 2019, I hosted a, a group on board Rocky Mountaineer to showcase it. And there was a gentleman seven foot tall. So I'm 5'2". There's always plenty of leg room for me. But uh, he was my litmus test. And he said he had plenty of leg room on board Rocky Mountaineer. Now, just a reminder for Silverleaf, your tray table comes down and you dine at your seat. Uh, we still do the whole crystal linen china. We will follow COVID procedures. I'll talk a little bit more about that because I think somebody was asking a question about that. Um, but, but we do the whole crystal linen china and we'll have individual packets instead of like the crystal, um, like salt and pepper shakers that we do. But again, plated, your food is plated in your rail car, in the kitchen, in your rail car and brought to your seat. 
If you have any dietary requests, please, please, please tell your birth travel advisor as soon as possible. Um, we can handle almost any dietary request except for kosher. So, but we have to know about it, right? You can't just show up. We have to know about it ahead of time. So you can further enhance your onboard experience with Silverleaf Plus. And what Silverleaf Plus, this is only available in the US, it includes all the benefits of our exceptional Silverleaf service, plus exclusive uh, access to a newly renovated lounge car. This is about $400 additional. And really what it gives you is um, more access, just more room inside to, to kind of move around. Um, again, all your food and drinks are included when you're on board Rocky Mountaineer, whether you're on Silverleaf or Silverleaf Plus, but we're gonna have a mixologist on board and probably some more, some more snacks. So it'll be, it's a, it'll be a really neat experience. So for Rocky Mountaineer to add a new route, um, it needed to be in a special location with some of the, the same features that we have in Western Canada. The incredible scenery, the iconic destinations, the, the all daylight, multi-day journey travels that really are best experienced by train. And you know, I do have to say, we've always wanted to expand our route um, into the US. And if there is a silver lining to COVID because we all have to see the positives, right? It's that we gained momentum and really pushed this into high gear to do it. And we're just so proud of the fact that we I believe we are the only travel company, if not, we're one of the very, very few that has actually expanded service in uh, during, during COVID. So this route showcases the best that the Southwest United States has to offer. We do operate again in both directions, eastbound and westbound. Um, Again, don't worry about those solid lines. I am gonna talk about that in just a minute. If you go eastbound or westbound, it is the same thing except between Glenwood and Moab. And I'll talk about that when I get to it. So if you're going westbound, you would start in Denver. And again, I recommend Denver too. I really do. I have a couple nephews that live there. So I really have become to love Denver. It's, it's a city, it's a bustling city with culture and diversity but yet it has kind of a nod to the old West era. There's the Denver Art Museum, if you're into art. Uh, there's Larimer Square. This is the oldest part of Denver with old Vic Victorian era buildings. By the way, Denver was ranked the fourth most walkable city in the US. Now, I don't know who ranks them, <laughs> right? But I do know for a fact that is very easy to get around. There's the 16th Street shuttle that goes right down 16th Street and stops at every block. Of course, uh, if you're a craft brew fan, you know that Denver is known for its craft breweries. And for that, I recommend going to the Lodo District, which is short for Lower Downtown. There you can find, um, I think, well over 100 craft breweries. Uh, so you can sample some of, some of Denver's finest. So you would get up at 9 a.m. and get on the train in Denver, and we're going to head to Glenwood Springs. By the way, the train only goes about 35 miles an hour max. So you're not gonna get into Glenwood Springs until about 5 p.m. So this is not a bullet train through Japan. We are a nice leisurely train ride through the Colorado Rockies. These are some of the sites you're gonna see. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but I'll go over just a few. The Big Ten Curve, um, an engineering marble that slowly gains elevation before reaching the Continental Divide. You can probably guess, we at, Rocky Mount, um, we at Rocky Mountaineer love our engineering marbles, especially on the rails. Remember the spiral tunnels I talked about? Well, I'll be darned, they found one in the United States as well, the, the, Big, Ten, um, the Big Ten curve. Uh, there is the Gross Res Reservoir Dam. This is, has a surface area of over 440 acres and it flows out of this 340 foot high dam. So it's very, very cool. We go past that. We go through the Moffat Tunnel. One of the reasons we can't bring our gold leaf rail cars down is the Moffat Tunnel. This was completed in the late 1920s and it connects the Denver area to Utah by tunneling under the Continental Divide. This is one of my favorites, Gore Canyon on this day. So Gore Canyon, another one of those sites that is inaccessible by car. So you can only see it on board Rocky Mountaineer or 
if you're a class five whitewater rafter. You can see it that way. Now I'm pretty adventurous. I am not class five adventurous. So don't know about you, but I am going to enjoy the Gore Canyon with a glass of wine on my hand uh, on board my spacious seat on board Rocky Mountaineer. So you'll get into Glenwood Springs around 5 p.m. Glenwood Springs is a resort city known for its hot springs. There's a couple different ones that you can explore. There's the Iron Mountain Hot Springs and the Glenwood Springs Resort. Uh, but definitely go down to 7th Street. This is where, uh, kind of like Restaurant Row. I've actually eaten at that hotel, or the hotel, the restaurant that says the Springs. What I love about Glenwood Springs is it has a street fair feel to it. So musicians will start playing and markets just pop up. So it's really, really cool. So 7th Street is where you want to head to. The next morning when you're going westbound, you would get up at 7 a.m. and you would have a wonderful breakfast on board Rocky Mountaineer and making the 194 mile trek to Moab, Utah, getting into Moab around noon. Um, remember, we go about 35 miles an hour max. Now here's where the difference is if you're going eastbound versus westbound. So if you start in Denver and you get to Glenwood, then on day two of the rail, you would get up and like I said, have a breakfast on board Rocky Mountaineer, leave at 7 a.m. and get into Moab at noon. If you go eastbound, you leave Moab at two, you have a wonderful dinner on board Rocky Mountaineer, which sounds really, really cool. And then you get into Glenwood Springs around seven. So again, it's just a matter of timing on that and what way works the best. Some of the sites today is Parachute Creek. It's a 15 mile tributary of the Colorado River. Um, Ruby Canyon, another one of those sites, only on board Rocky Mountaineer, can you see it? The LaSalle Mountains and Mount uh, Peel. So the LaSalle Mountains, they got their name originally by Sierra LaSalle, meaning the, the Salt Mountains, and they were the uh, the prominent landmark on the old Spanish trail between Santa Fe and LA. And there's the book cliffs. I wish I had a bit of better picture of the book cliffs, but I don't. They actually look like books stacked on a shelf. So very, very cool. Now, Moab, Utah is a touristy town, but it's a small town. It's about 5,000 people, but it is the closest to a lot of the national parks like Arches National Park, Canyonlands National Park, Dead Horse. Uh, so a lot, it is a touristy area. So there's a lot of shops and restaurants there as well. So we have many packages, probably about 12 packages that can uh, do on our rail. And you can either just do the rail only like here, the Rockies to the Red Rocks Classic. You could do Denver to Glenwood to Moab um, and then do your own thing. Or believe it or not, I, we're, we're very shocked at this. A lot of people want to then do their own thing for a few days and take the train back to Denver, which is really cool. I think it's a great idea. When I was first presented with that idea, I thought, uh, I don't know, but it is a really good idea because you're getting different experiences on board between Moab and Glenwood because of the timing and then back to Denver. So we have that that you can do. And then we also have packages that go Here's where the green dotted lines come in to either Salt Lake or to Las Vegas. This is done by motor coach. So this is now at this point, you have a travel director and driver. So this is more like a guided vacation. Um, I, I mentioned we have 12 different packages. I picked my favorite. Again, some go to Vegas, some go to Salt Lake. This one that I picked happens to go to Vegas. I like it because it does four of the mighty five national parks. So depending on which way you go, whether you start in Vegas or start in Denver, uh, you would do the rail line on board Rocky Mountaineer, and you would hit two nights in Moab and do Dead Horse, Monument Valley, Arches. By the way, Arches State Park has over 2,000 natural sandstone arches. Very, very cool. Um, head to Lake Powell, see the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Most people see the south rim. Bryce Canyon and Zion, and then head out from Vegas. We also have self-drive packages as well. And this is nice for those of you that maybe want to do a little more hiking, or you just want to explore it at your own pace. Again, we have them that go to Salt Lake or Vegas. This time I pick Salt Lake. And on this one, um, you would do Rocky Mountaineer, spend two nights in Moab, and then explore the national parks at your leisure, however you want to. 
and then fly out of Salt Lake. Okay, uh, so I mentioned our promotions for Canada. For the US, we honestly weren't going to plan on, on doing any promos and um, because we have the low introductory rates, but we decided to do one. What we're doing right now that just came out, we're doing a promotion if you go eastbound on Rocky Mountaineer. So remember, that would be probably starting in Salt Lake or Vegas, doing the touring first, getting on in Moab, and then heading to Denver. I kind of if I were to do it, I probably would do eastbound because you get the touring part out of the way, you're doing that, and then you're ending with a nice relaxing train ride for two days. Plus you get a really cool dinner on board Rocky Mountaineer. So anybody booking a 2021 Rockies to the Red Rocks package uh, going eastbound will get $300 off per couple. And this does expire June 20th of this year. Okay. So we know peace of mind is super, super important right now. I mean, we all need it, right? So I'm gonna just kind of go over our deposits and our refundability and all that. So for new 2021 bookings, this is 2021 bookings for US and Canada. A 20% deposit is due at the time of booking. Normally it's non-refundable, however, for 2021 bookings, we are going to make it refundable for 30 days prior to departure. So if you book in May and you're going in October, say October 5th, your deposit is refundable until September 5th-ish, um, which is when your final payment would be due. It, it really is risk-free. Um, you, you know, you don't have to worry about for it's for any reason at that point. You also do get two free date changes. So if something came up and you're like, well, I still want to do this, but I'd rather do it, you know, later in the season or next year, you can certainly do that as well. For 2022, uh, the deposit is due at the time of booking and it's refundable until December 3rd. Okay. We do not have our 2022 US routes out yet, um, but we do have our Canadian route out. Again, I want to mention the group that uh, Birch and Pegasus Travel has going, and this one is only a 10% deposit, like I mentioned. Uh, the promos are already built in, so you don't get additional promos on top of it, but it's already built in. It's going to be a fabulous, fabulous tour, so contact your favorite Birch Travel or Pegasus Travel advisor. Um, please, please work with them. They, I just love working with them. I've worked with them for quite some time. They're true, true professionals. And you know, what I love about them is they're so honest. They are going to tell you where you want to spend the money and where you want to save some money. And we all need that, right? So thank you so, so much. Um, I will go ahead, Gretchen, if you want to unmute, I'll go ahead and answer some questions that we have here while you're doing that. Okay, well, I'll, um, why don't I jump on first? and then you can gather the questions and get those answered when I'm, sure. when I'm done. So you, if sure. people have some questions, they, I'm assuming they can just put them in the chat box. Yep, put them in the oh, chat box. Okay, all right, well, thank you. Honestly, every time I hear this, I just <laughs> get so excited. And now with this new US route, I, I, it's just fantastic. What a great product and you do such a great job. So thank you, Dawn. Oh, thanks. I, Got me very excited. So I'm sure everybody on this uh, 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 presentation today ha may have a lot of questions, want to find out more, check availability. So um, I just want to kind of let everybody know the best way to do that is if you work with a Birch or Pegasus travel advisor and have their email, it's best to email them directly. If not, no problem. You can call the, the office. Um, all of our offices are open. Um, and if you don't know the phone number, you can go to our website, burstravel.com, go to locations, and all the locations are listed there with our hours, our phone number, and there's even a form there, a contact us, for, <clears throat> excuse me, form that you can fill out. So there's plenty of ways to reach us. Um, that sounds like business as usual, which it pretty much is, um, except for the fact um, with the social uh, distancing and protocols, a lot of our offices um, have some limited hours and are really kind of asking people to maybe set up an appointment so that we can keep the uh, protocols and requirements 
um, that that uh, the CDC has recommended as far as social distancing. So that's why I say it's best to email, um, call, or even send us a note, and then you can go from there with your travel advisor to set up a time. Maybe it's even a phone call or a Zoom meeting, um, but we're happy to answer any questions, um, check availability, um, get some you know additional information for you and that includes if you're interested in the group that we have you can reach out to your you know to your travel advisor and they'll work with you and with our group department um, to get more information and to check availability um, on that I know that's starting to uh, fill up but um, we just wanted to make sure everybody knew about it um, to know that you'd be traveling with a group and that's always kind of nice to have everything all taken care of for you so um, that is the best way to reach us. I will turn it back over to Dawn. And again, once again, say thank you so much for um, this great presentation. And I'll let you go ahead and answer questions because I'm sure you have some. I do, I do. Thanks, Gretchen, I appreciate it. Um, most of the questions are based around COVID. So I, which is not surprising at all. So I will kind of go ahead and, because I think I have like six questions on that. I will go ahead and try to answer them all in one belt, one big swoop precautions being taken regarding cleaning. We have a, a new air filtration system that will capture 99.9% .9 of the air particles. Also in both, both US and Canada, we will have electrostatic sprayers. So every single night that is getting sprayed down. The inside of the rail cars are getting sprayed down. Um, I also briefly touched on any type of communal, um, I don't know, utensils like salt and pepper shakers, they will be now individualized. So, so you'll have your own individual ones. Um, masks are trained. I mean, masks are a little hard because everything is changes on a daily basis as far as that. Um, but right now our train staff is going to be wearing masks the entire time. And we will be requiring masks at this point if you're not social distancing, like for example, if you're getting up and you're going to the washroom, um, if you're going to be doing the Silverleaf Plus and you're going to go into that car, then we will require that you do wear a mask, you know, when you're going, when you're not in your seat. And when you're in your seat, not able to social distance or when you're eating or drinking. So I kind of, I kind of chuckle at that a little bit because it seems like you're always eating and drinking on board Rocky Mountaineer. You don't go hungry on this train, that's for sure. So anytime you're not able to social distance is when we're going to require it as of now. But again, you know, states continually change it. Uh, people are continually getting vaccinated, uh, but that is the plan as of now. As far as immun immunizations, uh, we are not planning to require people to be immunized to board our train. We will have questionnaires on board, uh, health questions that we will require you to fill out. Um, if anybody becomes ill during the train car, we are going to have a separate train car just in case people become ill where they can be isolated in that area. Hopefully that won't happen. As far as immunizations uh, in Canada, uh, again, you won't need them to get on the train, but we don't know what's going to happen with the government, right? We don't know when the border is going to open, and we don't know if the federal, the Canadian federal government will require vaccinations for U.S. citizens or anybody for that matter to get into Canada. Um, just simply no way of knowing, just like there's no way of knowing when the border is going to open. I was just on a call today. And our manager of communications uh, has been in meeting upon meeting upon meeting with, you know, the high high ups of the Canadian government and the high ups of the travel industry and all working together. They know how important it is to get the border open, but um, they really just don't know at this point what the requirements to get into Canada will be. So I think I answered all the COVID questions. If I didn't put them in there again. Um, I do have, oh, well, we do have another COVID question. What arrangements do you have with the hotels regarding COVID cleaning? Um, the hotels we have, uh, you know, we trust all the hotels and all the properties that we are using. Um, you know, we're making sure that, of course, there's some things we don't have control over. So we don't have control over where, whether a, a hotel is going to require you to wear a mask in the lobby or not. 
Um, but we fully trust all of our partners. Uh, we've been working with them for a long time. And in the US, we have uh, tour operators that we are working with that we completely trust on that. So we're very comfortable. Uh, let me just say, we would not, we are not gonna risk 30, and it, actually now it's 31 years um, of our reputation just to operate a train. So, you know, we're, we're not gonna do that. So we are very proud of our reputation and we want to continue that. So we will work with all the best partners and we're gonna make sure everyone is completely safe. If we don't feel it's safe for our guests and our staff, Rocky Mountaineer is very high on their staff as well, um, then we simply would not operate it. Another question I have is in Canada, are the gold and silver, are the seats in gold and silver the same? They are not. There's a little bit of a difference. Um, the, the gold leaf, again, you said up higher, but the seats themselves are all leather. And some of them, not all of them, but some of them in, in the newer cars are heated. In silver leaf, they're kind of a leather um, cloth combination. And both, sit, both of them, though, do recline, okay? So both of them have footrests and do recline. So just a little bit different of a seat. So hopefully I answered that one okay. Um, anything else? Kind of your last call here. So you have me, you might as well ask me, right? <laughs> so um, again, you can put it in the chat or the Q&A. So it doesn't look like there's anything else. So please, like I said, uh, contact your travel advisor at, oh, what year, I do have another one, sorry. Um, what year is the Journey Through the Clouds special? I think that means uh, the group and the group is September 28th of 2022. So, um, Yes, and that will be a really fun group to go on. I really would recommend it. I think it's fun to go on Rocky Mountaineer with a group. I've been by myself, I've been with another couple, and I've been with a group. And my favorite way to go on board Rocky Mountaineer is with a group. Plus, you know, you might know people already on it from the area. If not, you're traveling with like-minded people from the same area, and that makes it really fun. You might meet new friends. So contact your, your travel advisor at, at Birch or... Um, sorry, I'm trying to, trying to. Um, Lara, Lara just sent a message. The dates are um, September 29th to October 7th, 2021. I thought we changed that to 2022, unless that's a separate group that we were doing, but I thought that was a change in, on that. Is, um, is me, John on? I I'll find out. I don't, um, Let me see if John, uh, he, he doesn't look like he is on. I'll, I'll, I'll research it. Um, I can quickly research it. So, okay. Yeah. Um, so my, my apologies on that, if I gave the wrong date out, but it was my assumption that we, uh, we changed the date, but I could, we, that could be a separate group that could just be a separate group. But I thought it was that we changed the date on that. Um, I thought it was a rebook. So yeah, please Gretchen, I'm sorry about that. Get that out and let, let everybody know on that. I can, I can let you know who asked that question and then we can, you can make sure you contact them directly for that. So, um, anything else on that? Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate your time and I really hope to see you on board Rocky Mountaineer. This is a special trip and I'm so excited that we're doing the US as well as Canada now. It's just, it's gonna be fabulous in both ways. So whether you're looking to stay closer to home this year and then maybe next year heading out or just looking to get out of town, uh, Rocky Mountaineer is a great option. So thank you, everyone. Hey, Dawn, Dawn, uh -huh. it's Gretchen. Um, I, I got a hold of John. It is this year. It's September 29 through October 7, 2021. So it's this September, October of 2021. Okay. Interesting. Oh, thank you. I'm really, really glad you said you, that. It must just, be a different group you have going then, because I know. Yeah, I was just going to say we're just we're just booking groups right and left. Because yeah. We're so the thank you. It's gone. <laughs> and the other one is September 28th. So that's where my confusion came in. That, that okay. you're 
both groups are that are are right around the same time. So September 29th, 2021, but it does have all those inclusions that I talked about. And um, obviously then it would be the your deposit, your final payment's gonna be before December 3rd. Let's put it that way, <laughs> if you're going this year. So. And, and just, a, a, just a, a tip for everybody too, if you want to um, double check, um, you know, if, for additional groups into 2022, um, you can always go to our website, birchtravel.com, go to services and then it's Birch um, exclusive groups. So you click on services and then go to Birch exclusive groups and it lists all of our groups there. So if we are putting one together for 2022, once we have that all finalized, that would be listed there. But all the details with a link to the brochure are also on the website for this one for 2021. So if you want okay. more details, you can just uh, go to the website and check that out. Perfect. And I do believe, I, and again, don't quote me on this one, but I do believe that um, I think there's only like a, hand, a small handful of seats left, like maybe five, six, something like that. Uh, yeah, seats it, left. It, is, it is limited. Yeah, there aren't a lot left. So if you have a family of 20 that want to go, we can't, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll make your, we'll, we'll create your own group for you. I was going to say, then we'll do a whole other group for you. Yes. Yeah. Um, I Lara, have a did, question of what uh, the advantage of being in a group is. And the advantage really is you're going to get the lowest price being in a group. Uh, you really are because uh, we're able to give you group rates. Um, also, you will have a 10% a deposit versus the normal 20% deposit. So, so I always feel that that being in a group, you you you're traveling with people nearby you, you're traveling with other people from around the area, and you really are getting the best rate as far as that because. Uh, we're buying in bulk from the hotels and we're passing that along uh, to you all. Okay, um, again, great questions. So Gretchen, any last words? Um, no, I think that's it. I, I know that there'll be a lot more questions. Again, reach out to your, um, your local Burst Travel Advisor and um, they can get those answered for you and um, follow up with any other questions. And, and with the group, we have um, just want to mention too that we um, have um, you know some, some things already pre-organized um, for you. Makes it just a little bit easier. Um, you know, there's a lot of things, inclusions that, that are all put together and pre-packaged. So that's another nice mm. benefit um, that you, you have it all in, in kind of one-stop shopping. Exactly, exactly. So, okay, great. Well, thank you, everybody. Again, I appreciate your time. Thank you, Gretchen, for having me. Um, it's always a pleasure working with you all. Um, and everybody have a great, a great rest of your evening. All right, great. Thanks, Don. Bye-bye, uh -huh. everyone. Bye-bye.